All right, remember for this project, you're gonna need some tape. You're gonna need a rag. In this case, I'm using just some paper towels. And if you wanna bring your own to class, that's fine. Just keep them in your drawer. I can't hold on to them for you. Um, if you don't have tape, then you're gonna have to use a ruler to create a border. And, you know, just bring the materials that I requested of you. First thing we're gonna do is we're going to use our tape to create a border. Uh, try to stick as close to the edge as you can. And do that all the way around. Once you have your border, it's time to apply the, the primer. In this case, it's gonna be a light gray paint. If it's dark gray, that's not really a big deal, so don't concern yourself too much with it. And we're just gonna do that. We're gonna get our paint on a paper plate and we're gonna mix it. I'm going to give you the paint for the first assignment or I might not if I trust you and that you're not going to get too much. Remember it's always better to get too little than too much because you can put more paint out but you can't put it back in the tube once it's out. And um, normally we're supposed to mix with, with a palette knife and we may do that. But for this first assignment since it's so basic I'm just going to have you mix with the brush and you don't need that much that much uh, black. Uh, this primer is so none of the white shows through, but it's also just to just to prep the surface since it's poster board and it really doesn't lend itself to to painting. So we're gonna paint on top of the primer and that's gonna help us it's gonna help the paint flow a bit smoother. So once you've mixed it, um, just start putting it on and it might be a little bit awkward for me since I'm not on an easel so I'm gonna have to hold it here in the corner you are gonna use the shiny side of the paper just remember that not that the other side won't work but the shiny side is a bit better so I'm gonna cover that with one layer when you're unloading the brush especially for the primer first you should load it like this we're gonna practice turning the brush like this in your hand because you're gonna to have to do that regularly. So you unload, you turn it, you unload the other side. So when I unload it over here, that's the best way to unload a brush. And you load it up the same way. Uh, what you don't wanna do is you don't wanna kind of stab it and do like that because it's gonna sp spread the bristles apart and it'll ruin the brush. Now that first layer is already on. Um, I'm going to add a second layer, just covering up the gaps. And you could wait for the paint to dry. It only takes about 10 minutes. And then add that second layer so we don't have any, any gaps showing through. And the, the paper is going to curl up on you because it's really not meant as a painting surface. So as it gets moist, it's going to curl and that's fine. Once it dries out, it should be okay. But you guys have enough clips on your easels to hold it from the top at the very least. And maybe at least hold one side if you put it near a corner. And that should keep it down enough if that's a problem. If you have any extra paint, just keep adding uh, a second layer or a third layer so we don't waste the paint. And plus, the more layers you get on there, the easier it's going to be to paint on it. All right, once your, your paint is applied, go ahead and let it dry. If you could see in my video, I have some glare right here. Okay, there's also another important reason I use the easel. Uh, that way you don't get glare because I have a I have a few lights in here and one is coming from behind me and that's why that glare is showing right now. Um, so use your easel. Okay, once your paper is dry enough, it's time to start putting the two layers. So what you're going to do is you're going to choose two colors and I might give it to you or I might have you get it yourself. 
Um, just remember that if you choose black and white, for instance, on the white area you're going to have to use uh, black and on the black area you're going to have to use white for the last step. Uh, this is acrylic paint, which means it's a water-based paint. So you can use water like a medium. A medium is something that we use to help the, the paint flow a little bit better. And you are gonna have either cups or you're gonna have bottles like this, just to keep your brush in. And this is just a water bottle that I, I cut and I turned the, the top upside down and I hot glued it in here. You don't have to hot glue it, but I like it so it doesn't spill in case it falls over and you don't put that much water in there actually so if it does spill you don't have a big problem that's just to keep the the brush the paint from drying in the brush and ruining the brush so the two colors that I'm going to use are yellow and green and let me give you an example of how you should get the paint so here's the yellow bottle and you should for the yellow you're actually going to need a little bit more but start with a small amount and as you need it you go and you get it now I poured I think that's an okay amount, um, but right in the beginning we're going to see how much you guys really need because again, like I said before, it's easy to, to pour it out but you can't put it back in. So make sure that it's about the size of a quarter and I think that's fair. Uh, the green, I know from experience, is a little bit stronger than the yellow, but we'll do about the size of a quarter as well. Um, and as you get more and more experience, then you'll know how much you're going to need, but always always do less than you think that way if you need more you just get a little more if that way we won't waste paint now what I'm gonna do is take your brush and now is when you're gonna use your rag like I said in my case I got a napkin but what we're gonna do is we're gonna have to constantly be taking out the the paint the previous paint so we had used gray and since we don't want to get our, our gray into our, our yellow, we're going to just wipe the brush like this. So again, a rag or a napkin, whatever you have on hand. And we're going to load up the brush on both sides just like this. Remember to practice turning the brush like this. It's something that you're going to do regularly. Uh, you're going to find the halfway point here. It doesn't have to be the halfway point. I'm just going to choose what I think is a halfway point. And you want to go across and turn the brush to use the other side. Now, uh, brushes are very versatile. And this is what this lesson is about. This is a lesson in abstract painting, but it's also a lesson in how to use the brush. That's why it'll probably be your first painting lesson because uh, I want you guys to start getting used to this and not ruin the brushes and use the appropriate amount of paint etc etc and know what the brush is capable of and this is just a little tougher for me again because I'm not on an easel so it's kind of standing up on me and finish unloading the brush by applying a bit more pressure with it a brush is a lot like uh, a quill pen in some ways like if you apply more pressure you get a broader stroke if you apply a little bit of pressure then you unload less of the paint um, if you use the tip of it you can use this make a straighter line and that's that's something that we're going to do to later this yellow does have a bit of green in it or maybe blue and so it gives off like a greenish tint and I want it to be for me personally I want it to be very yellow um, so I'm going to use more than one layer and when you want uh, when you are doing this go in the same direction so we avoid making those uh, those lines that streak like you don't want to see too much of the texture of the brush so you can go in the same direction like this Since I am only going in one direction, I'm only loading it on one side. This is holding this like this is a bit annoying. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to tape it to the table. 
but I'll do that after I apply my first layer. So what I mean it uh, by I'm loading it on one side is I'm just going like this on one side and unloading it the same way. For me personally, I want to get that line straight, as right, straight as I can, even though we are going to be blending. Okay, that's one layer. Uh, I think I need to do about two or three, maybe four. See, I have to hold it up so you don't see the glare. Um, and yeah, I'm going to do three or four layers to make sure that's nice and yellow and it looks good. But I'm not going to do all of those layers on camera. What you want to do is just give it a, a second. Give it like a minute for it to get a little tacky, at least. And then start applying your second layer. I am going to tape this down to the table because it keeps lifting on me. So, And I'm going to add those other layers. Uh, when you're painting, particularly for this assignment, you don't want to overload the brush with water. If you overload the brush with water, it's going to make the paint too runny. There are some occasions where you might want to use water, um, primarily with priming, but the water is just a clean out. For the most part, it's just to clean out the, the previous paint on the brush. So you don't need, you know, six brushes to get, to get something done. You could just use one and, and that's what the water is for. It's like in between colors. So the second layer is on, I'm going to do a third layer. The third layer is on, and now it's getting to where I want it to be. I think I'll do one more layer, and then I'll, I'll start working on the green. So now I've added the fourth layer of yellow, and that's really yellow, and that's what I want. Um, you'll see that as we paint, you'll see that I might be using terms like transparent or opaque transparency or opacity you have colors that are transparent meaning that they're see-through so that first layer of yellow that I put on you could still see the background now it's more opaque which means it's harder to see the background it's more solid green is a very solid color so we're not going to need that much of it like the yellow but you'll slowly learn with experience which colors are more transparent and which colors are more op opaque and how you should treat them uh, now I'm going to take the yellow out of the brush and you just put it in your water, give it a little, a little twirl. If you're using a bottle like this, sometimes these have ridges at the bottom which are also perfect for getting that paint out. Just you know, try to get the excess water out, get your rag or your napkin and just take the water out there. And for the most part, you don't have to get every single little bit of it out, but you do have to make sure there isn't too much in there so it doesn't mix with the next color. And our next color is green. And you'll see that this is gonna, this is gonna cover much more solid than the yellow. Now right here in the middle of these things, we're going to I think I have a little hair that fell here. I want to get it off before it dries on there. Oh. So something fell on there. So I might have to just go over this area uh, with, with the yellow. So uh, you're going to see that the green is much more opaque. It's more solid, so we need less of it. Let me clean the brush again, cover up that spot, and I'll be back. All right, I covered up that spot, and now I'm going to keep working with the green. Uh, don't worry about how close you get this to the edge. I mean, don't try to go too deep into the yellow, but we are going to blend these in the end. So I'm going to teach you a blending technique, which is also part of this assignment. So the two colors that you choose, I want to see them blended in the center. And this blending technique is much easier with oil paint because it doesn't dry so quickly. Um, but oil paint does let off some toxic chemicals and things like that. So 
we typically won't be using oil paint in class because of of my own health concerns. I mean, it, a little bit isn't a big deal, but um, I would like to keep you guys as safe as possible. And but you're more than welcome to. The technique still works with with acrylic paint and it's still the same with oil paint it's even easier so if you ever do in the future if you ever do paint with oil and I have all these little bits everywhere and that's why it's getting my stuff it, that's also another reason to use the easel so you don't get little bits um, in your paint so this technique works the same with oil paint if you ever use oil paint in the future all right, um, so very much the same way. I'm just gonna uh, add this layer of, of green. I'll come back once that, that layer is done to determine if I, if I want, even wanna add another layer because it's looking green enough. Okay, so I think uh, definitely one layer of green is enough. That's very green. Um, now I'm gonna teach you guys how to blend. So if your two layers have dried, what you want to do is you want to get a little bit of each and you kind of want to do this fast just because it does dry quickly and you're going to put one layer kind of try to lay it on a little thick right here right along the edge of the two colors and what you want to do is you want to quickly clean your brush because time matters as the you don't want the paint to dry or the technique won't work you're going to do the same thing with the other color. After you've cleaned your brush and you want to lay it on kind of thick, a little thick, not too, not too thick, but just enough to, to play with. quickly you want to clean your brush again you want a clean brush for this use your rag to dry it you don't want it to be too wet and that's what's getting little particles in my painting so now you're gonna zigzag across both of these like this all the way across clean your brush Let's just wipe it, no water. And then you wanna, with a clean brush, you wanna wipe across like this. If the brush gets too dirty, just wipe it again. Like if you see that it's not working anymore, just wipe it again. and softly, right? You don't want to apply too much pressure here. And that will give you a nice blend. I am going to mix a little bit, just a little bit of yellow and green on my palette, which your palette for this situation is going to be just a piece of paper or something flat. And the reason I want to do this is because I am going to too much of the line. You can't see it too much on the video, but a lot of the line is showing through. So I just want to make sure that the line is dissipated, that I don't have a sharp line there in the center to give it uh, a better feeling that it, that it's blended. And that works fantastically well with, with oil paint. And that's the end of the first part. Before you move on to the second part, you do want to make sure that, that your paint is dry. So at this point, you're going to have to give it 10, 15, maybe 20 minutes. Uh, make sure that it's completely dry so we can move on to the next step. All right, it's time for the last step. Now for the last step, you're gonna use black. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna create um, some lines, shapes, but in a very specific way. Now it's time to start learning how to use the brush. 
Now the brush is malleable, so what you can do to get a thin straight line, for instance, is you can use your rag and you flatten the tip of it. It has to be a little bit moist, but you shape it, right? So it's thinner at the top. When you're loading it up, just using the very tip of the brush, you're gonna load it up like this. You're gonna turn it, you're gonna load it, and you can take some of that out. Think of it almost as sharpening the brush to try to keep it thin right there at, at the top. And what I want you to do is I want you to make at least one thin line, one medium line, medium thickness, and one thick line. I want you to do one swerving line. I want you to do at least one circle, at least one triangle, and at least one square. So the first thing I'm gonna do is my thin line. And again, this is easier on the easel. Now just using the tip of the brush, And if you get a, a double line, don't worry. After all, this assignment is about learning how to use the brush. You are gonna have to load it up constantly, okay? Load it up constantly. And I said at least one. So here you have a bit of freedom to, to do more than one. That's a better line. That's a thin line. All right, now let's try a medium line. Now you wanna load the brush the same way, but you wanna put a little bit more meaning you wanna not just have it on the tip of the brush. And we're gonna do the same exact thing, but we're gonna put more pressure. So you push down a little bit more and you come across. If you see that the paint starts running out, you load it up again, okay? That's a medium line. Now let's do a thick line. Load the brush the same way. You don't have to do it like this. You could do them anywhere. And with the whole thickness of the brush, like this, we're going to create our thick line. Try to keep the brush steady. As it runs out, you could turn it to get the paint on the other side. If you still don't have enough paint, just load it up again. Now, a lot of you are gonna ask me, where do I put the lines? You put the lines wherever you want. Okay. That's the freedom you have in this assignment. And uh, I think I'm gonna load up a few more thin lines, medium lines, and thick lines just until I'm happy. And I'll come back to, for the shapes. All right, I want at least, by the way, you got a lot of glare. Again, you're not gonna see that on the easel. At least one swiggly line, okay? Now, for this, you have to kind of use the brush and go like this, let me show you. And you gotta turn the brush to get that swiggly line. Um, it's a bit challenging, and if you make a mistake, don't worry, there are no mistakes here. Um, let me give you an example. So as I make this line, I'm going to turn the brush. If it's coming off a little bit, like if it's not solid, don't even worry about it. Just keep going. And you could load up with more paint and go over the areas that are not solid or go over the whole thing again. So you can start to see how you're gonna curve it. If 
If you need to touch it up, just load up the paint. Use the corner of the brush. Just use the corner of the brush. If you have a smaller brush, you're welcome to use it, but you really should learn how to use just one brush so you know what, what the brushes are capable of. There are multiple types of brushes. This brush in particular is called a flat brush, and you can tell what type of brush it is right there. Um, it says number eight, and it's flat. And what that means is that the front is really flat. Typically, in class, we'll be using flat brushes or we'll be using uh, a filbert brush, which is a little bit round at the top. And the number just indicates the, the size of it. The bigger the number, the bigger the brush. Now there's really no order to this. I, I'm just being random being intuitive, like just putting objects where, where I see them or where I want them. Okay, so now we're moving on to the shapes. Now for the shapes, it's going to take some practice. You could just use the corner of the brush to start outlining your shape. So I'm trying to do a circle. As that paint starts to run out, turn the brush, use the other corner. And then use the flat side of the brush to fill it in. I am going to keep going until it's a bit rounder. My circle might turn into an oval, but I'm fine with that. And you should be too. Uh, again, this is just to practice using the brush. And to hopefully give you something that you can be proud of and take home, something a bit more decorative. I'm slightly trying to push down to catch that little bit that that came off. I'm just going to adjust it because it's it didn't come out like a circle and it's too close to this line so I'm just going to combine the two. And that's fine. If you want to make adjustments like that, that's part of painting as well. Especially if you're painting something abstract or something intuitive. With that being said, I still do want to make a, a proper circle. So I'm going to load the brush. And I don't want it too close. I'm going to learn from my mistake. I don't want it too close to the other things. And just right from the top, what I'm going to do is I'm going to just spin the brush. See what that does for me. Load up the brush again. The fact that this is on the table also is causing me some problems because it's not flat. Are you going to get a perfect circle? No, you're not going to get a perfect circle, so don't even try. If you ever had to paint a perfect circle, what you should do is use a template or draw the circle first using a compass. Um, so when you do your shapes, I want at least one of every one, but I do want to see some small shapes. So you're going to probably have to do more than one. So I want you to do some dots. Yeah, just do some dots that slowly increase in size. 
So you start getting used to that. And for that, you're going to have to use just the corner of the brush. So you use the corner of the brush. Make those dots. Do you have to line them up the way that I'm doing? No, not at all. Okay, I'm gonna make a few more. You guys make your dots where you wanna make them. And then I'm gonna come back and I'm gonna do the square. I'm gonna do a triangle. And maybe I'm gonna do a few curving lines and that's it. I'm gonna be done. And you're gonna be done as well. While we're working on this part, um, we don't have to put too much water in the brush because we're just sticking with black. Now, uh, square is probably one of the easiest shapes with this type of brush, especially with a flat brush. Square would be very difficult with what's called a round brush. Not very difficult, just more difficult. So we're just going to make a line. Turn the brush if the paint is running out. Try to make it as well as you can. I have to keep enlarging it because I keep screwing up. So this little corner, I'm just going to try to fill it in with the corner where it was here. And do something like that, something resembling a, a square. It's not perfect, but again, it, it doesn't have to be. Uh, we're going to try one smaller, just using the corner of the brush. Just make sure that it's loaded with paint properly. And lastly, let's go ahead and do um, the triangles. So you do the triangle. The way that I'm going to do it is I'm going to just use the edge to create the lines of the triangle and then I hope to fill it in. So using the edge of the brush or just the corners, just shape out the triangle. And then go ahead and and fill that in. Now I would I would consider this assignment finished. Uh, it does have some glare from the light. Okay, so you're not gonna have that problem once you when you work in the easel, or you shouldn't have that problem. Oh, let's do the curved lines. Let's go ahead and curve some of these lines. So the curved line is the same way as a straight line. Just curve the brush. If your lines aren't perfect, that's not a problem, remember? So just don't even worry about it. You do have that glare. That's what that looks like. And make lines and shapes until your heart's content or until we just run out of time and it's time to turn in the assignment. I may display these depending on how it turns out. Um, so this is your first painting assignment to teach you how to use your brush. And it's also an abstract work of a, an abstract work.
So if you like abstract art, then that's what we're making here. All right, I'm going to consider this one done with the painting at least. Remember to clean your brush. Always clean your brush. Uh, if it's the last day that we're painting, you have to go over to the sinks, clean your brush in the sink. If it's not the last day that we're painting, just make sure you leave it in your, in your water for the next class. If your water gets murky, remember that we're not using the water to paint. You're just using to get it the old color out. So it's not really a problem. So don't constantly get up to change your water. I'm going to let the black dry and then I'm going to take the tape off and we'll be done with this. Okay, time to take the tape off. Uh, I have to take it off the table, the table first. You're not going to have to do that because you're going to paint on the easel. But you are going to have to unclip it. Try, try to take off the tape slowly. Um, this is poster boards. It's not meant for this. Uh, so if your paper rips, that's okay. We're just learning how to paint here. And it's probably not going to look that bad anyways. Even with a little rip in it, it'll be hard to tell. But just try to do it slowly anyway, so, um, so as to avoid the ripping. If it does rip, that's fine. You probably won't even be able to tell. If you get a little bit of overflow from your original gray, that's fine too. Not a big deal. If you don't have tape, then you could outline a square or you could just try to paint a square, but your edges aren't going to be as clean. And if you don't have tape, I'm probably definitely not going to display it outside um, because your edges won't be clean. the back here. See that definitely tore a bit. And time for the last one. Uh, there's still plenty of glare, but you're not going to see that, right? That's only because it's, it's, laid, it's laying flat. Um, if you want to sign it, you can sign it. I'm not going to sign it. Uh, that's it. That's the abstract painting and also the, the introductory lesson to how to use your, your brush. Hope you guys enjoyed it.